join you again. And this is the Church of Nazarene Family Forum. And as usual, we're glad to share with you. Normally, we come to you on Sunday evenings at five o'clock. And uh, we appreciate your feedback on these sessions. Of course, as is mentioned in the caption, it's really on the family and issues that relate to the family. And as I said before, the motivation is that we believe that if we can tackle um, some of the inherent issues in the family, uh, we'll be able to build a better Barbados. So we want to welcome again our co-host, I'm Reverend Kelman. A very pleasant to be with you, good to be with you, Hello, party. All right. And it is also a pleasure to welcome Dr. Adrian Lord. A well-known face, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, we, we are honored to steal out of his time this morning. Dr. Lord, welcome. Good evening. Thank you. We're glad to be here. All right. So um, we want to have an opening prayer, and then you, of course, have a short break after that. Father, we thank you for this opportunity where we can share on this topic of coping with the COVID-19 virus is so relevant at this time. We realize we surely have to look to you for help. We appreciate the hard work of the doctors and nurses, the scientists, all those involved, and we realize that we have to work together to be able to combat this virus. And we appreciate your guidance today in this session. This is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Viewers, we'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Let's be back with you this afternoon and uh, as well already said we have Dr. Adrian Lord who will share this today. He's a, a, a family physician in private practice, a uh, graduate of University of West Indies at Mona and also an associate professor, so the, uh, a lecturer. So we have a, a very distinguished gentleman uh, with us this, this evening. Uh, also as you know he is uh, uh, a member of the, the Church of Christ the King, and um, he is a Eucharistic minister. And I'm sure many of you will have seen his posting over the uh, over Facebook over the last, uh, WhatsApp over the last uh, few months. He has done about 153 COVID-19 postings. So wow. here's a man who understands this uh, <laughs> the virus and uh, and its impact in terms of our of our, of our country. So welcome to you, Dr. Lord. And we are indeed delighted to have you with us mm -hmm. uh, this evening. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'll just continue my ministry yes. in of course. speaking about <laughs> COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that God gave me the wisdom mm -hmm. to be educated. Mm -hmm. And I always feel that I need to give back to the community. Um, I, I feel that we have not been educated enough um, properly and therefore the misinformation, there's a pandemic of misinformation yeah. or as uh, uh, Reverend Koff, right, Davis um, said, a pandemic of, of, of um, ignorance. Um, so we, this morning, this afternoon, I'll talk to you about the COVID-19 virus. As you know, it was first discovered in Wuhan, China in December 2019. And really and truly, I don't care where it came from. If it yes. came from bats or if it came from the lab. The point is that it came here, how it got here, by airplanes. Mm -hmm. So the point is here in Barbados, is in the yeah. Caribbean, mm -hmm. and we've had over uh, 1, 000, uh, 1,100 cases in Barbados of, of COVID-19, and over 100 deaths, mm -hmm. um, uh, over 100, uh, yeah, over 100 deaths mm -hmm. in, in this country. Mm -hmm. um, so it is serious. Mm -hmm. And now with the Delta variant, mm -hmm. we now need to buckle up even more. Mm -hmm. The virus is transmitted 
um, by droplets or aerosols to uh, the mouth. Um, generally, is a respiratory virus, so the virus maintains itself, stays into the, the, the respiratory system, and therefore you can pass it on easily, quite easily. And this Delta variant is even more transmissible. The thing about the, this virus is that it can be asymptomatic. You may have no symptoms at all and not recognize that you have the virus. And this is something that people don't understand. All mild symptoms, I mean, the mild symptoms of a cough or a cold or running nose or fever, headaches, vomiting, diarrhea. And the other thing about it is that you can have complications. Mm -hmm. And the complications are the shortness of breath, respiratory problems, kidney problems, heart problems. It affects the whole, can affect the whole body. And people don't recognize the seriousness of this, this, this particular virus. Mm -hmm. And the other important point that we need to emphasize is that even if you are asymptomatic, in other words, if you have had no symptoms, a month, two months, three months down the line, you may just turn up with what's called long COVID, L-O-N-G, not L-U-N-G, long COVID, three months down the line. So Beverly, not her real name, came and saw me last week. Mm -hmm. She had COVID-19 in February. She went up to Harrison's Point. She contracted it to her workplace. Went to Harrison's Point. This is a 50-year-old lady. She had no core morbidities. She had no hypertension, no diabetes, nothing. So she was a little bit overweight. No, since then she's been on sick leave eight times since February. She cannot walk 15 meters without being short of breath. She has a chronic cough, she has asthma, she has diabetes that she never had before, she has joint pains, and this is what happens with COVID-19. It affects the skin, can affect the system in the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the, the brain, the sexual function is also affected. Circulation is affected. The nerves are affected. And what we have to be concerned about in this Barbados with our limited resources is that how are we going to be able to manage not only the pandemic or the breakout now, but the effects on our health system mm -hmm. when these people have the complications down the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is really taxing. Mm -hmm presently and it will continue to tax us in the future is taxing our healthcare workers primarily mm -hmm. our frontline workers our government our finances and it just our churches That's right. <laughs> i mean <laughs> we can't meet as we can't meet as we're accustomed and when we gather we have to scatter <laughs> we cannot we cannot stay around <laughs> and talk we cannot right. meet the elderly. Yes. We cannot go and do the... And people are now sick yes. and anxious and tired. And the ministry that we normally would give from the church, mm -hmm. we cannot go and touch hands, mm -hmm. lay our hands on people. Mm -hmm. And don't talk about funerals. Now is not a good time to die. Mm -hmm. It might be a good time to get married because <laughs> you have smaller numbers. <laughs> but now is not because you don't get that send off. That closure. That yeah. closure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and if you die from COVID, it is a painful, lonely death. Mm -hmm. You don't have your family around. Mm -hmm. Your minister can't come and give you the last words and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so people are not recognizing the true impact mm -hmm. of this virus mm -hmm. on our society. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you raised some very, very important issues, um, Dr. Lord. And one of the things that came up to me was that a cold is not a cold, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, as soon as someone observes, uh, you know, the kind of symptoms that would indicate the potential or possibly of COVID, once you get checked and not take it very lightly. Yes, this morning I passed by the Warren Spot Clinic, yes. or Eunice Gibson, yes. and the lanes are outside yeah. in the it's road right. already, mm -hmm. already. Before seven. Already. Mm -hmm. Before seven, they were out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you need to be checked. Mm -hmm. You need to be tested if you have any signs or symptoms 
which you thought was just a cold. Um, it might be COVID-19. And before you go and see a doctor, it's better to get that test done. They obviously, if you have been in contact with someone who has been diagnosed with it, yeah, you need to also have checked. Mm -hmm. And earlier this week, our prime minister said, we're talking about safe zones now. So if you are not taking the vaccine and you want to work in certain areas, you need to be tested on a, a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to put all these things into place and, and, and educate and let people understand the true implications of it and the complications of of, of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And they're going to tell you about seeing, you know, in our next program. Mm -hmm. But it, is, it seems pretty clear to me, though, that, um, you know, in terms of a, of a crisis, of a, in terms of, of, of health crisis, that COVID can be precipitated in our, in our nation. Mm -hmm. uh, because if persons are being, uh, and the negative are so focused on COVID, then it will be all the other ailments that, that will occur in mm -hmm. our journey. Of life, you, know, you want to comment on that? Like I, I fear strongly this. Because our health resources are being taken up now with COVID 19, the nurses, the polyclinics, and so on, that regular childhood immunization program is being compromised. Mm -hmm. That hypertensive diabetic that needs to go to the polyclinic, or the private physician, or the hospital, or the specialist. Mm -hmm. can't get that done. Mm -hmm. That person with a lump in the breast, it's a breast cancer awareness month, to get that lumpectomy or tests or mammogram or whatever, mm -hmm. there's fear of even going to get it checked because you fear you might catch something if you go into a healthcare institution. Mm -hmm. So the implications, and we've already seen it, a few weeks ago was World Heart Day. And the cardiologists are seeing, they're seeing a lot more people who are coming in with heart attack mm -hmm. because they're not taking their medications for the high cholesterol or the high, for the diabetes or the hypertension. And therefore the complications are there. Mm -hmm. Not they're not taking, they also fear even going to the pharmacy to get your repeat prescription. Mm -hmm. or, or the doctors are not available in some situations to consult them and they're getting telephone coming for a prescription mm -hmm. and, and, and you don't feel not that the same thing. The same, it's not yeah. the same thing. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of consequences mm -hmm. of this. All right, we, we can dig a little deeper. Um, when, we, when we come back, take a short break and we'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Back with you, um, Dr. Lord, you've mentioned um, some eye-openers, so to speak. I, I think perhaps persons are not being conscious. I think the point you made earlier, education. Um, either persons are absorbing this information over there, and not listening for the core issues, uh, key facts, and so on. Um, you mentioned the whole idea of the church and uh, how are they going to be able to conduct ministry. You want to elaborate on that a little more? Yes, um, because of the pandemic, <coughs> we told people stay home. <laughs> and then we closed the churches because unfortunately, in some churches, there were people who were congregating and not keeping your distances. So he also said, keep your distance, right? Watch your distance, wear your mask, wash your hands. That is all against what we do at church. Church, we get together and join together and, and fellowship so together, fellowship. Mm -hmm. okay? So that has affected church mm -hmm. service. Yes. So now we have online church and it doesn't give you that same um, connection. connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's a new norm mm -hmm. and we have to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. Of course, the churches are suffering as well because fewer people are attending the church services when you were allowed to go into the church. Mm -hmm. And also we are 
therefore there's less collection coming in, mm -hmm. although people may consciously give. But also those people who are working, they have to help those people who are not working. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> and those children, you have to buy tablets and all those sort of things. Mm -hmm. um, some churches have breakfast programs and so on. Now that is no longer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people have to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things going on on, mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. And therefore the implications of, of this whole COVID-19 is great. It's yes. massive. Yeah. So the laying on of hands, the mm -hmm. gathering, the meeting and greeting, mm -hmm. The, the, the ministering to the ill and the sick, the, the classes and the different groups within the church, mm -hmm. it's being affected yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the choir practice. Choir so practice. On. Yeah. yeah. Choir group meetings choir group. and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, probably, you know, that's, that's what's making this, this pandemic so challenging for mm -hmm. us, though. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes to physical issues, mm -hmm. but also the emotional realities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as Allah said, the, the, the distancing, the loss of fellowship, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we, we understand it, then. it's yeah. not, you know, the more you understand yeah, what but these, these are realities. Right, right. And, mm -hmm. and so, and mm -hmm. so that sort of connection, that sort of, I mean, bridge that person's got from church, because mm -hmm. for some persons, mm -hmm. church really is the only social engagement that they have, you know, yeah. yes. you know, and that's the taken away from them, uh, to me, is, is, is it's difficult. It's a, it's difficult. Yeah, but I think we really understand it, you know, yeah. but, yeah. Really, but it, these are realities you have to, in fact, um, the Lord referred to uh, which, which is one of the eventualities of the COVID and the church, less collections. Mm. But less collections, but the demands on the church are greater mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. there are people in the community who have lost their jobs. Some of mm -hmm. our own church members, of course, we don't only help our members, mm -hmm. but some of the members have lost their job. Um, some person in the community, I think I think in the case of Elsa, has kind of worsened, worsened things. Mm -hmm. so, so the church is... Um, demand on their finances for help. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Compassionate ministry. Yeah. Yeah. So so maybe less finances but a greater demand. Demand. Yeah. Uh, and maybe mm -hmm. maybe it's a time for us to kind of reimagine ministry as well too. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. maybe fund our ministries as yes. well. Because yeah. mm -hmm. because there are still persons out there who are very benevolent mm -hmm. and who want to give. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe the church has to find a mechanism for mm -hmm. to be able to, to kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, connect with those, those persons. But I want to ask the Lord a, a question of families, though. Um, COVID should come upon us by suddenly. You know, they go to work and you get a phone call. Someone has tested positive and therefore they are currently contact. How, how do families prepare in advance for that possibility? Yeah, I think this is a, this is a very good question and something that we need to put into perspective now. Mm -hmm. The reality is that all of us can will be, know someone can be touched. Can be touched. <laughs> if you haven't been touched yet, mm -hmm. you'll be touched indirectly. You will know someone who has had COVID who, and soon from now, all of us, well, you in the ministry might know people who have died from, but oh, yeah. all of us will know someone who has died from COVID-19. Oh. Okay? That is the... the, the, the <laughs> I, I don't want to go into what the, the, the predictions are because it's really frightening. Mm -hmm. the, the, the UE people now say 700 per day mm -hmm. is what they're looking at. We feel, we feel that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it yeah. may contrast the, 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 the illness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we're getting 200 and 300, mm -hmm. and they're saying it could go up to 700. Yeah. But we're probably getting that now, you know. Before because we, we yeah. are only talk, counting the confirmed cases. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Pretty close to that. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is the problem. And now it, it is also driving people on the ground. That's right. They don't want to go and test it because they don't want to go to Harrison Cape um, mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Because if they go up there, they might die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But going back to your question, we need to be cognizant of COVID-19 mm -hmm. and recognize that it's here mm -hmm. and we need to live with it mm -hmm. and find a way. Families now have to prepare themselves for it. You're going to find a situation where you might have to wear masks at home. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of people are getting COVID-19 because people are bringing it into the home. People say, I don't go nowhere, but those 70 people at the psychiatric hospital never went anywhere. Correct. The ones at the geriatric hospital didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. The ones at the Hermatis prison, Dodds, didn't go anywhere. Couldn't go anywhere. Couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and in, in the various 
homes and so on, nursing homes and so on. They didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it, you don't have to go anywhere to get this thing. It's very subtle. It's yeah. Very subtle. It's and so it's very infectious as well. It's very infectious. Yeah. You, you mentioned also, I think, what concerns me is the long COVID mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps I'm not sure if persons are kind of tracking when it comes to that. You want to expand mm -hmm. a little bit? You go long, long COVID. COVID yeah, mm -hmm. long haul COVID. It was first called chronic COVID. This is called, but long COVID is what is now referred to by the World Health Organization. So then people had chicken ganya a few years ago. Some people still have the joint pains from the chicken ganya. Even, even now? Even now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. With COVID, you get a cytokine storm. Anything goes into this system, this spike protein going to attack your cells. You get a lot of inflammation occurring, a lot of anti any, uh, body just gets irritated, inflamed, sore, mm -hmm. and therefore attacks the joints, the heart, the brain, the eyes. Mm -hmm. I mentioned the sexual reproductive Most system all because organs. all any organ in the body mm -hmm. Some people it quiets down and nothing happens in thing, but in a percentage of persons, and we don't know because it is a new disease still, mm -hmm. we found that some people, even if they were asymptomatic or even aware that they had it, may have these symptoms down the road. Down the road. Yeah. Down the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they can be very debilitating. The lady I spoke to, I had to put her on medically unfit. Because oh. she can't wear a mask. Mm -hmm. She can't breathe. Mm -hmm. She can't walk. Her sugars are up in the air. She, she, she just can't cope. Mm -hmm. But that is what it's so all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was I wondering if you would talk a little bit more, a little more issue of the, the Delta variant in light of the animal mutation and all the virus changing, mm -hmm. um, because there's some seeming, you know, myths being um, promoted mm -hmm. about that in terms of vaccine, that purpose is the vaccine was causing um, the, the mutation of the, of the, of the virus. Yeah, that is, then that's ignorance again and misinformation. Mm -hmm. Viruses mutate normally. The flu virus changes every year. Viruses, in order to live, they mutate, they change, and they like to have human beings, especially a host. A host mm -hmm. Okay, so it's normal for viruses to have variants. Mm -hmm. The mut mutants are called the variants. There have been several variants of COVID-19. Four recognized as variants of concern, the alpha, beta, um, gamma, and delta. But there's the epsilon, there's the uh, mu, mu, um, a whole lot, theta, a lot of other variants, but those are not as aggressive and the infective delta. as mm -hmm. thing, as the delta has been. Mm -hmm. The delta now the predominant variant. It is more transmissible, mm -hmm. is more infectious, it, it causes more morbidity, more sickness, and they said initially it doesn't cause more deaths, but mm -hmm. because it overwhelms the healthcare system, right. therefore the inability to you provide efficient and proper care yes. of those who are sick because of the numbers, mm -hmm. then deaths can, the happen. Death can, can occur. Happen. Yeah, yeah. So the resources are stretched, the mm -hmm. physical and um, other resources are stretched, mm -hmm. therefore that's why that's... Mm -hmm. Alright, we'll come back in a moment. Um, viewers, we, I trust that you'll be listening carefully. One of the things we want to help do here on this program is to educate so that we can make informed decisions. We shall be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, we're back with you again uh, for our final segment in this program. I want to ask Dr. Lord, though, could you, could you talk a little bit about some of the practical things we can do like in terms of nutrition um, to, to keep our body strong? Um, yeah. yeah. Very good question. We need to keep our bodies strong. We need to keep your bodies healthy. We need to keep on fighting off this cruel virus. 
what they call cool COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to make sure you have a healthy, balanced diet. You need to cut down the alcohol, and smoking, and that sort of thing. You need to make sure you have your carbohydrates and the, cut down the fats, um, eat your vegetables and so on, and eat properly and regularly. So that's nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, you also need to make sure that you get adequate rest because rest is, is important. That's important. Yeah, sleep is important. Get your body um, recover, mm -hmm. rejuvenated. That's right. Okay. Drink lots of water. Keep your fluid intake going. And also, the other thing that you need to do is exercise. Mm -hmm. Keep that body weight going. Keep the body moving. Of course, within reason, mm -hmm. we're not going into the gyms, but you can have, except for the rains, um, get out there and do some walking, some gardening, some uh, jumping jacks, whatever. Get your physical activity going. Mm -hmm. um, Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Mm -hmm. And keep your body weight down, keep your thing. And of course, get your regular checkups. Right. And of course, as you say, the protocols, mm -hmm. which you know very well. Yeah. Dr. Lawrence, thank you so much. Half hour has gone so quickly. But we are glad that we will have a chance to speak to you in the next program on the whole on vaccines. And uh, Reverend Kelman, you, your, your final comment, and then you'll pray for us. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it has been quite an opener uh, yeah. for us here. And you mentioned the issue of long COVID, you know, yes. and uh, the, the, the effects that can continue way past, you know, your, uh, the disease, you know, mm -hmm. you, get, you get with the disease, but the effects are still yeah. continuing. And I do trust for that a uh, person would understand the immense challenge of COVID and that, and that we will do the right things mm -hmm. so as to keep ourselves strong and to work with our, with our families as much as we possibly yeah. can. Mm -hmm. So thanks again for joining us this this evening. Shall we pray? Father, we give you thanks today for the gift of education. And we pray even as we would have shared today that persons will be challenged to a different way of operating in the face of this pandemic. Give us guidance, Father, give us strength. Uh, give us the faith, Lord, to face uh, this very difficult time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, Dr. Lord, thank you. Thank you so much. You're okay, viewers, trust that you respond in a favorable way. Let's each of us do our part to fight this virus. God bless you.